the saga of entitled parents who can't respect OP's wishes and boundaries. I was going to post this in Baby Bumps, but as I kept writing, I realized it belonged here. I will try to keep this concise, but I am on mobile, so bear with me please. I am a 27F, married to a 26M. We are parents to a 2F. I am about 4 months pregnant with my second baby. I had my daughter in March of 2020, so I wasn't allowed any visitors in the hospital, and we decided to be safe and not allow any visitors for a couple of months after coming home. My parents hated this rule we had set, mainly my dad. My dad drove my mom and brother crazy those entire two months. They would beg us to let them visit because of how my dad would take his frustration at not seeing my baby out on them. We, of course, did eventually lift our ban on visitors when May was almost over, which was a whole other can of worms. Now we are pregnant with our second and have moved to a new state, about 16 hours away. I had loved not having visitors during the first two months with my first and intend on doing the same with this one, especially since I will be adjusting to a new way of life. While on a video call with my brother, my mom loudly suggested he visit me in February. They were visiting my grandma, and I felt brave enough to shout, No, I don't want any visitors that month. I will either be huge and tired or have just given birth. My mom argued and said I will be adjusting to having a toddler to take care of while caring for my baby, so therefore, I will need help. My grandma heard this and said, She'll manage? I had to. Remember, I had four all two years or less apart, and I did just fine. I love my grandma. Well, a few days after the video call, I was talking to my parents on the phone, and my dad said, When we are there in February, don't worry, we will stay in a hotel. We will be there to help. You don't have to host. Excuse me. What? I said, Um, I don't want any visitors that month. My dad said, We will be there to help. Even if it means taking as my daughter for a day, so you can rest. I said, But I already told my brother and mom that I don't want any visitors. My dad said, we missed so much when S was first born. We don't want to miss any of those precious first moments with this one. Ugh, Reddit. Any suggestions? My husband said, we should just not open the door at all when they get here. If they want to waste gas and vacation time, then that's their choice. Update. I'm hoping this works. I'm still on mobile. I spoke to my husband about the post, and even gushed about all the commenters who love him. He blushed and felt flattered. I also told him about some of the suggestions that were made and he says they feel rather excessive. He's the type that would rather not go to the extreme, especially since some of his siblings are doing that to his dad after his parents divorced, going so far as to return to sender anything he sends to their kids, Christmas and birthday gifts. What happened was between him and Mill. The grandkids shouldn't suffer because of it, but that was the parents' choice, so we respect it. He agrees with putting our request in writing so we have physical proof. He doesn't want me sending a mass letter out to people because everyone already knows we don't want visitors, and so far my parents are the only ones who disagree with it and plan to visit anyway. I am going to send a long text message to both my parents and brother. I will be clear and concise, and then screenshot it in case they somehow figure out how to delete messages. They are pretty inept with technology, worse than me. I will tell them that if they still refuse to respect our wishes, they will be met with locked doors and windows. They will have traveled for nothing. They have been warned. I expect my phone to blow up with phone calls and texts, if they start anything. I will post a picture of the message on Facebook. As I have been clear as crystal on Facebook, I do not want any visitors when this baby is born. One of my cousins agreed wholeheartedly with me. I will update you on how it goes. Thank you everyone for your support and suggestions. Baby is kicking a lot today as well. So I guess they sense what is going on. Update. This is what I have composed and am about to press send. Pray for my phone. It is about four years old, which is pretty old for technology. Hey guys, in regards to February, if you all are still planning to visit, I request that you cancel those plans or postpone them until April. We want to have that time to rest, recover, and bond as a new family of four. It is our time with our baby. Please respect our wishes. Update. I finally got a reply to the group text I had sent to my parents and brother. I had even sent another text saying, to be clear, we will not be having visitors in March either. The response came from my mom, which I predicted because, more than likely, my dad is giving me the silent treatment and my mom is the mediator of the family. Her reply was this. I was just wondering if this goes for the in-laws as well, who live in my state. Are you going to keep Grandma Mill and the aunts and uncles from there away for a month and a half? 
I kind of understand what you are saying, but I have a feeling that they will be around after the new baby is born. My reply. Everyone knows our wishes, and everyone understands. Her reply. Okay. Oh yeah, I have a strong suspicion that this is far from over. I know what my mom was trying to do. Update. So I decided to call my parents' house phone to see who I would get. My grandma had a bad fall last week, not long after I had sent the message. So my mom had been messaging me and calling me with updates on her. So I called to see how everyone was doing in regards to grandma. She is home and well taken care of. My brother answered the phone and was the only one home, as I suspected. My dad is giving me the silent treatment and believes that just because I don't want them here when I give birth, that means I don't want them in my life at all. This is not true. I like being in contact with them, but I am doing my best to set boundaries. My brother believes my message was too harsh, and I should have been more nice, I said. I was as polite and civil as I could have been. In fact, some people I showed it to beforehand thought I was too soft. So if this is harsh, and I could have been more harsh, then that means I got the message across just fine. How you received it is on you, not me. He didn't like the answer and changed the subject. He tried reminiscing about our childhood, which I have mostly blocked out since moving away. He tried to make our dad out to be this wonderful father. And yeah, he was a decent dad when we were little. All he seems to ever talk about in regards to the good old days with dad are the years I least remember because of how little I was at the time. Well, as updates go, there might be more later on, but I am not sure. My parents are arguing, mostly because of how angry and disappointed he is with me, and my mom actually understands, but is bad at standing up to him when she actually agrees with me. She was asking for my dad in her reply to my text. Thank you for your patience and your awesome comments. My poor brother is doing his best to stay out of the drama due to stress-induced heart problems. We all know where his stress comes from. Update. Well, hello again. The fallout of my message to my parents and brother is a bit more dramatic than I would like. But that is how I expected it. Today, I decided to call my mom. My brother had informed me yesterday. She was stressed about planning a farewell party for a friend, and I thought I could help her think of easy ways of pulling this off, knowing she hates party planning and never knows how to do it. So she works herself up about it. I am not much of a party planner either, but I know how to host, despite being introverted. I just like making people happy and having a good time. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. I called my mom, and well, we never got around to discussing the farewell bash for her friend. She was too busy frantically flea bombing her house with borax and wanting to get it all done before my dad got home. According to her and my brother, my dad thinks the flea problem they had been having was a non issue and the mere fact they wanted to do something about it made him angry. So if he heard they had done something about it, or if he came home while they were still doing said thing, he would go into a rage. Hearing this did not surprise me. I was actually surprised at the lack of astonishment I felt. Also, they rushed me off the phone, trying to make it sound like they were just in a hurry to vacuum up the borax and make it look like nothing ever happened. I know it was more than that, as my dad is angry with me and is giving me the silent treatment. The man can hold a grudge, and the sheer fact that we would be communicating would indeed make him angry. As I stated in my last update, the man thinks that us not wanting them here in February means we don't want them in our lives at all. We do, if they respect our wishes and boundaries. We live far enough away that it should be simple for them. It should have been simple when we lived closer to them, but whatever. I knew from the panic in their voice that my dad must have let them know he was on his way home. The call ended rather abruptly. Not much of an update, but it just confirms to me even more that my dad is definitely the more problematic one. Not that I needed that much of a confirmation to begin with. I just thought I'd update. So some stuff has happened since my last post. My parents are still trying to make me feel guilty for not wanting visitors. But so far they haven't made any insinuations that they are going to break the boundary. They have been sending us gifts, mainly for our daughter, which is nice. They think we need government aid because I let slip that money is tight at the moment and we're on a strict budget. We see the end of this period coming soon though, but right now we have to be more creative and pay more attention to where our money goes. I have explained this to them. But no, they think we are about to be homeless or something. Just because we can't afford to buy steaks, pot roasts, or meat with every meal. Good heavens, I have repeatedly told them that this is temporary. My dad said, this seems to happen often. I told him that it's part of life, and a lot of the time, it's our own fault. They threatened to sign up for us. We don't want that. We are fine. And I can see them holding it over us because their gifts are always conditional. We found out we're having a baby boy. 
So now we will have one of each. I have decided to wait a bit longer after this baby to have another one. We don't want a lot of kids, but we do want more than two. My parents are thrilled. My mom, most of all. She wasn't even close to this enthusiastic when we learned our daughter would be a girl. She wouldn't even believe the ultrasound and kept trying to convince me to doubt it. Of course, she denies all of this. It's quite unsettling to see how enthusiastic my family is about us having a boy when it wasn't as close for a girl. They love their granddaughter, but still, it's hard to see. My grandma warned me over the phone when I called her to tell her the news, which she had already heard from my parents. She would not be surprised if my mom made her way out here in February all by herself just to see her new grandson. The sad thing is, I wouldn't be surprised either. I will try to update if there are more developments. And of course, I will update in February when our boy makes his arrival. Thank you all for your comments and for following this series. Update. Hello everyone. I just thought I'd give a new update on my entitled parents who wouldn't respect my boundaries. Well, I am now eight months pregnant, which is hard to believe. It feels like only yesterday that I found out I was pregnant during one of the most stressful times of my life, i.e. moving halfway across the country. Yup, I found out the very same month I was moving. It's a miracle we have made it this far without any major complications. Pregnancy is going well. Both the baby boy and I are healthy. We had a bout of placenta previa, but that has thankfully resolved itself. Now for my parents. They have been sending us Aldi gift cards to help us with our groceries, since I refused to ask for government assistance. My conservative parents are still insisting on that. Oh the irony. But hey, who am I to turn down a gift card to have part of my groceries paid for me? Especially at this time of year. They seemed relaxed about the whole visiting thing, and told me they definitely planned to visit in April. Funny though, my dad made it sound like a threat when he confirmed that they would be here in April. Like, okay. My mom keeps trying to compare my pregnancy to her pregnancy with me. She had gallbladder problems. I do not have any issues with my gallbladder. We are not the same. My parents are also offended on my behalf that my husband is offering to help me get back into shape after I recover from giving birth. Something I actually want to do. He knows I want to exercise so I can get fit and keep up with our soon-to-be two young children under the age of four. I know babies aren't active until they are at least six months old at the earliest, but I do have a toddler as well. Plus, he intends to stay with the kids while I go to the gym. This was something we mutually discussed and agreed upon. Yet all my parents mainly my mom heard was that my husband thinks I will get fat right after giving birth and finds me unattractive. Cue aggressive, I roll in here. So, now that my parents know the baby will be a boy, they have been pestering me about names. Hubs and I found a name we like. But we are not ready to reveal it yet. My dad keeps trying to convince me to name my son after him. I don't like my dad's name. And also, having someone named after you should be an honor and a privilege, right? He just won't get it. He also seems to hate that my husband is picky about names and doesn't just want to go with any name I have suggested. Like, my husband shouldn't get veto power since I am the one carrying the baby. He should love the name because it will be his baby's name. Yes, but he should get the chance to agree on the name and like the name before it's his kid's name. So fun. My family is so entertaining from far away. If I do not update again before February, I will post when a little guy gets here. Happy holidays, everyone. Tangentially related posts. Before the current post series. Backstory into how OP's family reacted with their first child. Ada for not wanting my parents to babysit my daughter. So, I have a long history of having relationship issues with my parents. But that's for another subordinate. My parents became brand new grandparents to my baby girl last March I know. Just in time for lockdowns and social distancing. While it was a pain for everyone at that time to be apart from family and friends, it was actually quite convenient for me as a new mom who had just given birth. My parents were, understandably, upset. They couldn't see their first and currently only grandchild. I felt for them, but I was still so happy that I could focus on the whole being a new parent thing and not worry about germs from people who aren't me and my husband. My dad seemed to suffer the most during that period. He was desperate to hold my baby, and it frankly got to the point where it was creepy. He would hog the camera during video calls and comment on every Facebook post that he wanted to hold her and kiss her. He started getting mad every time we said, no, not yet, whenever he begged us to let him visit. This was over the course of two and a half months. Finally, Mother's Day came, and we asked if they were healthy. The visit was a nightmare. My father hogged my baby and barely allowed my mom to have her. He threw a fit when I had to feed her eye bottle fed for personal reasons. 
She would fuss if other people did it. Even her daddy. I want my baby to want to be fed. My mom told me I was going to make my dad cry because of this. Other things happened afterward that didn't sit well with me. The next visits after this weren't that different. My dad constantly tried to hog her, to the point where I would make sure other people held her before him. He would pout like a child every time and sulk, or if we were at their place, he would go into another room the entire visit and play video games. He has now resorted to surprise visits. I live over an hour away from my parents. This brings us to today. I was on the phone with my mom and talking about hopeful vacation plans. She asked if we were bringing the baby. Since we were thinking about flying to our vacation destination, we decided it would be better if the baby would stay with family this time. Since my mom had me on speaker, my dad heard and told me to tell them the dates of our vacation so they would know when they were needed for the baby. I told them we had already planned to ask my sister-in-law since she has watched the baby before and the baby knows her well enough that she's comfortable with her. My dad got extremely quiet and my mom told me he left the room. I know this made him upset, but from previous experiences with him and how he is with my baby, I just don't feel comfortable leaving her with him. So, Ada, my dad creeps my daughter out. My daughter is almost 11 months old, and my dad has been obsessed with her since before she was born. When we told my parents I was pregnant, he fixated on my baby being his buddy. His partner in crime. I never cared for that label to begin with, but whenever he would say it, it bothered me in ways I couldn't explain. My husband thought I was just being paranoid and silly at that time. But that changed when our daughter was born. This will be the only time I am grateful for the pandemic. My daughter was born at the end of March 2020. Right when everything was shutting down and social distancing was becoming a major thing. At first, I felt bad for family members not meeting my little bundle of joy. But my dad went crazy. Constantly calling and texting, begging for pictures, hogging the camera during video calls, and just constantly saying, I want to hold her. I want to kiss her. Zero. Asking how I'm doing as a new mom. Not even a polite. How are you? As a greeting on the phone. Only talking and asking about her. Again at first, I felt bad for them. Then. The visits began. They got to meet her around Mother's Day. My dad hogged her and barely let my mom or brother hold her. He wanted to feed her, change her diapers, and put her down for naps. He literally jumped up and volunteered, like Katniss, to change my daughter's diapers. I'm sorry, but it's one thing to ask politely if you, the exhausted mom, would mind or like it if they could change the diapers for you. But it's a whole other thing if you're so excited to do it that you jump up with an excited smile and then pout like a five-year-old when told no. It honestly disturbed me how excited he was to change her diapers. And thankfully my husband felt just as disturbed as I was. Not much changed over the next few visits. My husband noticed during the second visit with my parents that my dad was being even more creepy. When it was Lowe's nap time, I refused to let him put her down for her nap, since I had little routine to keep her calm when I put her down. He became rude and sat on with his phone out the rest of the visit. Every visit, he would get right up in my daughter's face, which made her upset. I keep telling him to not do that, but he never listens. My dad would pout and get grumpy when other people held my daughter. He wouldn't listen when people, including me and my aunt, his sister, would tell him not to pick her up when she's already content. One time my dad said, you know, people offering you help doesn't mean they think you're a bad mom. I never thought he thought that. He's just creeping me out. During that visit, my daughter was overtired, and I was trying to get her to go to sleep. He insisted on taking her into a room by himself. She threw up on him for being so upset. My dad is constantly jealous of my in-laws every time we visit them. We tell him it's because they actually schedule visits with us, which he hates to do. He says he doesn't want to make appointments to see his granddaughter. Funny, before she was born, he never batted an eye about scheduling to see us. But now that she's around, how dare we want to schedule? We're busy people. We can just drop everything and come over. And the house isn't always tidy enough for me to want guests to drop in. He keeps wanting to just stop by without talking to us first. He has surprised us before, and we did not appreciate it. We live over an hour away from my parents, and the surprise visit was on a day my husband worked and we wanted to chill as a family before he left. Last time he dropped in on me, he had the courtesy to give me a five-minute heads up. I had plans that day, not that he cared. He just wanted to see his grandson. He whined about how long it had been since he had seen her one whole week. Yes, but before it was two months. Yet, you just saw her last week. I don't want to make appointments to see my grandbaby. And you. 
Yes, the, and you sounded exactly like an afterthought. A couple weeks ago, he stormed away from a phone conversation my mom had on speaker. When I told them we were going to ask my sister-in-law to babysit while my husband and I were on vacation. He had already had it set in his mind that he and my mom were going to babysit for us. Now to yesterday. The latest of disastrous visits. I invited them over for dinner, which I planned well in advance. The way everyone came charging and automatically overwhelmed my daughter. Hi baby girl. How are you sunshine? You're getting so big. Cue the wide eyes and tears of an almost 11-month-old girl. She had a vice grip on me the entire visit and wouldn't let anyone else hold her. Her reaction made my dad angry. The quiet angry. He sat in our big chair, his full face frowning, looking at his phone. When she would relax, he tried getting right up in her face. She would then relapse back into vice grip and crying mode. I kept telling him to give her space and let her relax. He then gave me a look like I was trying to poison her against him. No dude. You're not letting her have her personal space. She was so anxious that she wouldn't eat. She didn't eat her snack. And she wouldn't eat her dinner unless she was on my lap and I was eating with her. Even that took some coaxing. She was happiest in my lap, in my arms, or on the floor away from my dad with me next to her. And surprisingly, she was even happier in her crib for a nap or baton. My mom read to her, which made her smile, but my dad looked super jealous and even pouted during the stories. He wanted to read to her, but my mom, who has hearing problems, didn't hear him over my daughter's crying. She just picked up a book and read gently enough to her that it calmed her down. My mom kept explaining to him that my daughter was overwhelmed. Give her time, she'll calm down. He just grunted and replied. After all of that, my dad volunteered to babysit her next week. When we don't need a babysitter. It was the weirdest conversation. He asked when we usually go shopping. I said Thursdays. He offered to babysit her while we went grocery shopping. I said we grocery shop as a family. We don't need a sitter. Yes, but you can just drop her off so we have alone time with her for a couple of hours. Major red flags were set off in my head. Even my mom looked confused and tried to defuse the situation by saying they could come down before we shop and leave her at home with them. Um, no. I was so taken aback by this that I just said, I'll bring it up to Hubs. And changed the subject. I thought my dad was just entitled, but I think yesterday put him in the just no category for me. Would I be correct in thinking so? Update. Thank you everyone for the wonderful comments and upvotes. I honestly didn't think the post would get this much attention. I vented to my husband a bit more about my parents' behavior during the visit. He wasn't home when they were because he had to work. He wishes he was. Some weird things came to mind about the visit that I feel I should share. My parents asked if I would like them to bring wine. Something they have never done before. They don't drink alcohol because they are on the keto diet. And before that, they didn't drink because they are Christians who care about their image. I know. I told them they didn't need to. Just any all beverage would be fine if they did want to bring anything. They asked, what kind of wine? So I told them a specific white wine I like would be fine if they were so insistent. They brought a huge bottle of blush. They do this. I say one thing, and they get another. Like, okay, I drink, but not that much. Wow. I make dinner, and we all have two glasses of wine. I sipped mine like a French woman. Very slowly. They drank theirs like Thor does with beer. They offered me more, but I said no. I am still on the clock as a mother. After we all had wine, that was when they brought up babysitting. Before they left, they took the wine, which I figured whatever, I did not like anyway. I like white. I told my husband this, and he said, A. Very suspicious that they insisted on bringing wine. B. The bottle was huge. What? Did they think you're a wine o like your grandmother? C. Wait. They took the open bottle home with them. Did you want them arrested? That's illegal. And nice. I couldn't help but grin like the Cheshire cat at the last one. I had forgotten that driving with an open liquor bottle in the car, even in the trunk, is illegal. Oh, and they almost accused my husband of being home and hiding from them, because one of my neighbors has the same car as him. After the current post series, further problems with OP's brother, Ada for lecturing my older brother, after he told his boss I was pregnant. While I 27F was on the phone with my older brother 31M, my brother revealed to me that his boss pulled him aside at work last night, asking him why he had been looking so nervous all shift. He's a school janitor. For a little backstory, I used to work where he currently does, although before he started there, and in a different position monitor, his boss was once my boss as well, and we weren't exactly besties. 
He explained to her pretty much everything going on in his personal life that was making him nervous in general, before revealing the real work-related reason why he was so anxious. The info dump included me moving halfway across the country, that I am pregnant, and when I was due, I had to calm myself before stating how much I did not appreciate him telling his boss, my former boss, about my personal life, and how he had no business telling his boss about his own personal life either. She might even take advantage of it someday and use it against him. Plus again, why are you telling your boss about your personal life anyway? Why did she feel the need to ask you what you were anxious about? That is none of her business. You should have stated it as such and left it at that. Or even just state the work-related reason and leave it at that. She doesn't need to know about my life. Well, according to my mother, who heard the conversation as the phone was on speaker, I was too hard on him, and now he's worried, I said. Well, it's just something you shouldn't do. I got written up for showing off my engagement ring to the students at the school, when all I did was wear my engagement ring to work. So if I was in trouble with something as simple as that, what makes you think it's safe to dump your personal life on your boss? She said, Okay, spooky bagel, just move on. You're making him upset. It's been bugging me all day now. So yeah, was I the a-hole here? Update. I apologized to my brother for how harsh I was. I explained calmly how uncomfortable it had made me when he spoke to his boss about me. He said he understood, and we have moved on. Thank you for all the responses from both sides and points of view. I don't want to just blame hormones, but I have been extremely touchy and emotional lately, as I am in my third trimester, so that may or may not have had something to do with how I responded to him. Again, thank you for the comments. Final update. Greetings all. It has been a while. I kept forgetting to post an update to my story. I have been busy adjusting to life with a newborn and toddler. A little update on my situation. I went into labor two weeks early with my son. He is now a healthy, happy, smiley three-month-old. The labor went well with no complications, and I am so happy it was two weeks early. I am a petite woman, and I believe if I gave birth any later than I did, my boy would probably be close to ten pounds. He is currently fitting into six nine-month clothes. My parents kept their promise and visited the first week of April. They didn't force their help on me, and we had a fairly decent time with them. My dad didn't even jump to volunteer to change diapers. I think the fact that I now use cloth diapers instead of disposables deterred him a little. They plan to visit again in August. Thank you to all who followed my saga. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.